Hello and welcome to another episode of A Fresh Perspective here on Heavenward Thinking. Today we're continuing on to the second part of Romans chapter 14. Starting in verse 13, I'm going to read it and we'll get right into today's conversation. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives his human approval. Let us, therefore, make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So, whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So as we look at this kind of point-blank, blunt passage of Paul's here in Romans 14, uh, what strikes you as really relevant other than the whole thing, because it is? Paul's talking a lot about food. Mm. It's very relevant, right? Like uh, Again, Paul's talking about food. We can apply this to all kinds of things, but he's specifically here talking about food right Mm -hmm. and this whole thing is food that was offered to idols right food that has been declared clean and unclean and this whole this whole mixture of things that he has going on with the jewish people and the gentiles right and and different different ones food is different for different people and again paul's coming in and saying uh it's not about food Mm. right it's about faith it's about obedience it's about intention it's about why you're doing what you're doing for who you're doing what you're doing and so i think again in this section it's the context of the whole thing that really matters why are you doing what you're doing Mm. do you actually believe what you're what you're believing and again he he somehow mixes in here listen if you have doubt it's sin Mm. right and and i like that that's that's a crazy thing because we have doubt about all kinds of things not just food Mm, absolutely and i think uh like what you said at the very beginning it's it's not just about the food here that, that's a, a surface issue but really what he's saying here is it's about that heart and mind that we've been talking about all throughout romans it's about that about your relationship and your faith in christ jesus and not everyone has that same level of faith he, should, he says some people think that something is right and some people think that something's wrong uh, i i can remember as a young christian in a christian school where they thought for a while that gum was a sin and different people have a different perspective of of what sin is and we're told just not to cause anyone to stumble so if me eating meat uh, causes someone to stumble that's that's a problem and as you said this was specifically to meat sacrifice to idols so we have to apply that to different things in today's culture but at the same time we're just trying to get to the heart of this that is we shouldn't be causing other people to stumble by the things we're doing the things we do should be as paul says edifying people and creating peace and joy all those things all right so uh, i think what you said is super relevant so let object lesson it right uh chewing gum as a sin most people are listening to you going what in the world are you talking about right but but when you really stop and you think about it if you're a student in school and you're chonking on gum right number one it's super disrespectful when someone a teacher an authority is talking to you and you're chonking on your gum while you're talking to them right it's disrespectful number two super distracting i've listened to people chew gum mm-hmm. right it can be very very distracting in the middle of a test super distracting and mm-hmm. yet one of our techniques for test taking is to give people gum <laughs> right but yet you could be sitting there in quiet and it can be driving you nuts it's like you know nails on a chalkboard type of thing right so there's there's reasons right again you cough your gum goes out it goes in the girl's hair ahead of you that's a big 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 problem that peanut mm-hmm. butter had and stuff have to take care of right so you look at it and you say something that looks on the outside is well who would ever care about gum in school <laughs> you can quickly get to this is distracting mm-hmm. it can be distracting in nature 
is it a sin? Well, it is a sin if it's causing other people to stumble, if it's mm. causing other people to be distracted. It's not a sin for you, mm-hmm. right? But it can be sinful in nature when you know that it's going to affect other people. Listen, you can think whatever you want about people, but the second you open your mouth, right, and you start talking about people, it becomes gossip. It mm. becomes a sin, right? Like this is the difference that Paul's saying in here. Like you can think whatever you want about food. But if how you do it causes other people to stumble, well, then that's a problem. Well, now this whole concept is a problem because it can be taken way out. And Mm -hmm. now, really, truly, a group of people can never eat without somebody offending somebody. (laughs) So you look at that and say, some person uses a spoon for their soup. Some people slurp it. Some people use crackers. Some people people get offended because you put ketchup (laughs) on their meat. And they're like, oh, you ruined it, right? There's all kinds of ways to cause division. Paul's like... As far as it is for you, live in peace with each other, right? Mm. Just think. Stop and think. Absolutely. And he goes even further and says uh, that whatever you whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. So uh, it's easy for us to go, holy cow, this gets really crazy really quickly if we go to, well, this person thinks this is wrong, this person gets offended by this, this distracts somebody, this causes someone else to stumble. Uh, but I think when we look at the last couple of verses, it really clarifies what we should be doing. If you think something's wrong and other people are saying it's it's totally right and it's not a sin, uh, then then it, you're supposed to keep that between you and God. It's a, it's a you and God thing, what what you're doing in faith. If you're having doubts about something, then don't do it. Make sure that you're doing what you believe is right based on what is found in Scripture, based on what God is telling you and what God is convicting you through the Holy Spirit to believe in. Uh, but these, these smaller beliefs, the, these surface matter things like the food issue and all kinds of different issues that are similar in nature those are things that we're supposed to keep quiet and not make giant deals about because that's when the division as you mentioned that's when the division comes when we when we make this such a big deal uh, that's where the division comes in so if we keep those smaller less important things out of controversial times and out of controversial places and just do what is honorable in the sight of God and other people, and we try to not cause people to stumble by just living in peace and doing what helps other people be built up in Christ, as this passage suggests, then I think we're going to get away from all of those dangers. And I think we're going to steer clear from that in this chapter. Yeah, I mean, the key is you and God have to do some business and know what you believe and why you're doing it, right? If I have, if I have diabetes, I have to change my diet because of of my body mm. right so now all of a sudden it becomes important to me is it important to me for to warn other people yeah you're to be a watchman warn other people but what you can't do is judge and condemn and and destroy it. lots of times we have people who are on certain diets and mm. they think that diet because it's worked for them is the end all of all things mm. right and and it's just the greatest thing in the world and so they then condemn everybody else who's eating anything contrary to them or vice versa if i have to sit there and eat salad and you're eating steak i condemn your steak i get mad because you have to eat steak right you get to eat steak so i think again what paul says is have faith in what you don't be double-minded right but but have faith in what you're doing right mm. because the second that you you say well god wants this for everybody you better believe that that's what god wants <laughs> yeah Otherwise, you're sinning in that because you're causing other people to stumble in that judgment. And and we talked about, in the previous week, we talked about judging other people. And it asked us in the first half of the, of the chapter, why are we judging people? Because we're just, we're just passing judgment on ourselves when we do that. And, and that's found all throughout Scripture, that we're told not to judge other people. So I think when we read this this half of the chapter, I think we, we get confused because then we think we can't ever do anything because it might make someone be offended. Uh, but we need to put it all into context. We need to not judge other people for what they're doing when it's not wrong. It's just something that we would prefer them not to do or we would prefer them to do. Uh, we, we have to remember that first and foremost. And then we have to live, as it says, and as you said, uh, we have to live from faith. And in faith, we need to do the things that God is calling us to do. And they may be different than the, the person sitting next to you. They may be different in nature uh, because God has something different for each of us. And, and our faith is different. We, we all are going to take away something different from different passages uh, and that's not to say that the scripture can just be whatever we want it to be but each person is going to have different thoughts and, and those thoughts uh, like we said shouldn't ever override the peace and the unity 
of the body of Christ. As this section really emphasizes, we need to make sure that we're maintaining unity and that we're maintaining love for people and, and treating people well by not passing judgment on them and not causing people to stumble. So, I, I mean, I guess I would sum this up in saying the hardest part about Christianity really is the corporate aspect, mm. right? Doing life with other people. And again, in, in the early church, people did their thing all day long then they got together at night and did corporate like today's church we do i mean almost all we do is corporate in nature corporate in nature it doesn't matter if it's small groups or if it's large groups or whatever. we're always doing things corporate and that makes all of this really really hard mm -hmm. right but but when we we start looking at it from an individual idea and say like all right hey listen for, as, from the individual, I just need to do what God has called me to do. Mm. When I'm dealing with other people, now i got to think about other people. Absolutely. Right? So the more you do with other people, the harder this becomes. Now, that doesn't mean you don't do it. <laughs> right? It just means be careful. Right? Like, mm. Again, if you're somebody that's got to be with other people all the time, and then you're crying and whining about those other people all the time, that, that's probably where the problem is. Is mm -hmm. that you're choosing to do the hardest part of Christianity. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a great summary of this chapter. Uh, so I would encourage you to really take this to heart. Make sure that you spend some time considering what are you doing when you're around other people? Are you doing things to build them up? Or are you doing things that cause people to stumble? And then join us next time for another episode of A Fresh Perspective here on Heavenward Thinking.